Introduction to Drainage System Drainage means the river system in a particular area. A river system consists of the total area covered by the tributaries and other water bodies that join the main river. A drainage basin is an area drained by a single river system. This finally drains into a large water body, such as a lake, the sea or ocean. The drainage basin works as a funnel, by collecting all the water within the area and channeling it into a waterway. The Drainage Patterns The four main drainage patterns are Dendritic Drainage The dendritic drainage pattern develops when the river follows the slope of the terrain. Rectangular Drainage The rectangular drainage pattern develops on a strongly jointed rocky terrain. Trellis Drainage A river joined by its tributaries at almost right angles develops a trellis pattern. Radial Drainage The radial drainage pattern has a central peak, from where the water flows in different directions. Drainage Systems in India Drainage systems in India can broadly be categorized as Himalayan rivers and peninsula rivers. The Himalayan rivers are fed by the snow melting from the mighty Himalayas and also seasonal rains, and hence these are perennial rivers. Peninsula rivers originate in the central highlands of the peninsula, and depend solely on the rains, are seasonal. The Himalayan rivers The major Himalayan rivers are the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. These rivers are long, and are joined by many large and important tributaries. The Indus River System The river Indus rises in Tibet, near Lake Mansaro War. Flowing west, it enters India in the Ladakh district of Jammu and Kashmir. It forms a picturesque gorge in this part. Several tributaries, the Zaska, the Nubra, the Shyok and the Hunza, join it in the Kashmir region. The Indus flows through Baltistan and Gilgit and emerges from the mountains at Atak. The Satluj, the Bees, the Ravi, the Chenab and the Jhelum join together to enter the Indus near Mthankat in Pakistan. Beyond this, the Indus flows southwards eventually reaching the Arabian Sea, east of Karachi. The Indus has a very gentle slope. With a total length of 2,900 kilometers, the Indus is one of the longest rivers of the world. A little over a third of the Indus Basin is located in the states of Jammu and Kashmir, Timakal Pradesh, Punjab and the rest is in Pakistan. The Ganga River System The headwaters of the Ganga, called the Bhagirati, is fed by the Gangotri Glacier and joined by the Alaknanduat Divaprayag in Uttarakhand. The Ganga is joined by many tributaries from the Himalayas, such as the Yamuna, the Gargara, and the Kozi. They are the rivers, which flood every year, causing wider spread damage to life and property but enriching the soil for the extensive agricultural lands. The main tributaries, which come from the peninsular uplands, are the Chambal, the Bitwa and the Sun. These rise from semi-arid areas, have shorter courses and do not carry much water in them. The main stream flows southwards into Bangladesh and is joined by the Brahmaputra. Further downstream, it is known as the Meghna. This mighty river, with waters from the Ganga, and the Brahmaputra, flows into the Bay of Bengal. The delta formed by these rivers is known as the Sundarban Delta. The length of the Ganga is over 2,500 kilometers. Ambala is located between the Indus and the Ganga river systems. The Brahmaputra River System 
The Brahmaputra rises in the east of Mansarowar Lake in Tibet. It is slightly longer than the Indus, and most of its course lies outside India. It flows eastwards parallel to the Himalayas. On reaching the Namkabawa, it takes a U-turn and enters India in Arunachal Pradesh through a gorge. In Tibet, the river carries a smaller volume of water and less silt as it is a cold and dry area. Every year during the rainy season, the river overflows its banks, causing extensive damage due to floods in Assam and Bangladesh. The river shifts its channel frequently. The Peninsula Rivers Most of the major rivers of the peninsula such as the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri flow eastwards and drain into the Bay of Bengal. These rivers make deltas at their mouths. The Narmada and the Tapi are the only long rivers, which flow west and make estuaries. The drainage basins of the peninsula rivers are comparatively small in size. The Narmada Basin The Narmada rises in the Amarkantak Hills in Madhya Pradesh. It flows towards the west in a rift valley formed due to faulting. On its way to the sea, the Narmada creates many picturesque locations. The marble rocks, near Jibalpur where the Narmada flows through a deep gorge, and the Dwada Falls where the river plunges over steep rocks, are some of the notable ones. All the tributaries of the Narmada are very short and most of these join the main stream at right angles. The Narmada covers parts of Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. The Tapi Basin The Tapi rises in the Satpura Ranges, in the Betil district of Madhya Pradesh. It also flows in a rift valley parallel to the Narmada but it is much shorter in length. Its basin covers parts of Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, and Maharashtra. The coastal plains between the Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea are very narrow. Hence, the coastal rivers are short. The main west flowing rivers are Sabarmati, Mahi, and Beriyar. The Godavari Basin The Godavari is the largest peninsula river and it rises from the slopes of the western Ghats in the Nasik district of Maharashtra. Its length is about 1,500 km. It drains into the Bay of Bengal. Its drainage basin is also the largest among the peninsula rivers. The basin covers parts of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh. The Godavari is joined by a number of tributaries such as the Purna, the Wardha, the Pranhita, the Mantra, the Wanganga and the Benganga. The last three tributaries are very large. Because of its length and the area it covers, it is also known as the Dakshin Ganga. The Mahanaji Basin The Mahanadi rises in the highlands of Katasgah. It flows through Adishha to reach the Bay of Bengal. The length of the river is about 860 kilometers. Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Katisgat, Jharkhand, and Adishka. The Krishna Basin Rising from a spring near Mahabush War, the Krishna flows for about 1,400 kilometers and reaches the Bay of Bengal. The Tungabhadra, the Koyana, the Gitprabha, the Musi and the Bhima are some of its tributaries. Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh. The Kaveri Basin The Kaveri rises in the Brahmagri range of the Western Ghats and it reaches the Bay of Bengal in the south of Kudlaw, in Tamil Nadu. The total length of the river is about 760 km. Its main tributary Saramravati, Bhavani, Himavati, and Karbini. Its basin drains parts of Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. Lakes
India has many lakes. These differ from each other in the size, and other characteristics. Most lakes are permanent, some contain water only during the rainy season, like the lakes in the basins of inland drainage of semi-arid regions. There are some of the lakes which are the result of the action of glaciers and ice sheets, while the others have been formed by wind, river action, and human activities. A meandering river across a floodplain forms cutoffs that later develop into oxbow lakes. Spits and bars form lagoons in the coastal areas. For example, the Chilica Lake, the Pulicat Lake, the Koloya Lake. Lakes in the region of inland drainage are sometimes seasonal. For example, the Samba Lake in Rajasthan is a salt water lake. Its water is used for producing salt. Most of the freshwater lakes are in the Himalayan region. They are of glacial origin. In other words, they formed when glaciers dug out a basin, which was later filled with snow melt. The Wula Lake in Jammu and Kashmir, in contrast, is the result of the tectonic activity. It is the largest freshwater lake in India. The Dal Lake, Dental, Nainital, and Loch Tak are some other important freshwater lakes. Apart from some natural lakes, the damming of the rivers for the generation of hydel power has led to the formation of lakes like the Guru Gobain Sagar. Lakes are of great value to human beings. A lake helps to regulate the flow of a river. During heavy rainfall, it prevents flooding and during the dry season, it helps to maintain an even flow of water. Lakes can also be used for developing hydel power. They moderate the climate of the surroundings, maintain the aquatic ecosystem, enhance the magnificence of nature, help develop tourism and provide recreation. Role of rivers in the economy Rivers have been of fundamental importance throughout the human history. Water from the rivers is a basic natural resource, essential for various human activities. Therefore, the river banks have attracted settlers from ancient times. These settlements have now become big cities. Using rivers for irrigation, hydropower generation and navigation is very important, particularly to a country like India, where agriculture is the major source of livelihood of the majority of its population. River Pollution the growing domestic, municipal, industrial and agricultural demand for water from rivers naturally affects the quality of water. As a result, more and more water is being drained out of the rivers reducing their volume. On the other hand, a heavy load of untreated sewage and industrial effluents are emptied into the rivers. This affects not only the quality of water but also the self-cleansing capacity of the river. But the increasing urbanization and industrialization do not allow it to happen and the pollution level of many rivers has been rising. Concern over rising pollution in our rivers led to the launching of various action plans to clean the rivers, 